All right, I'm gonna show you guys how I do my uh, my drowning uh, slider rigs, uh, specifically more for beaver and otter. Although you can use this for just about anything as far as water trapping, uh, coon, mink, muskrat, uh, pretty much whatever visits the water. Um, I don't really do a whole lot with the uh, coon, mink, and muskrat. Um, I, I more more use this for uh, beaver and otter. Uh, one of my very favorite sets. A uh, couple reasons why I like it is. Uh, especially with otter, if uh, they're real shy, it's it's pretty hard to get an otter to go through th through a 330, especially here in Ohio. Um, there's not a whole lot of them. It's not like down down south. So uh, the ones that are here, they're pretty educated, pretty smart, and uh, to fence them down into a 330 can be pretty hard unless you're in a, a little blind set underneath the water, or something like that, uh, a little pinch point maybe. But uh, that's one reason I like these. Um, if you're trapping around a beaver hut, uh, you get a couple beaver out of their runs. They a lot of times will get shy, uh, kind of move away from that little bit of area. With these footholds, it's all hidden. Uh, you're not fencing them down, and it it seems to work really well for me. Um, now this is a this is something I've been practicing and kind of reworking out every year for the last few years here. Um, I feel like the the system I have is. Um, it works really well for me. Um, I, I think I pretty much have it down to where I, I don't have any problems. Um, I've learned a lot of what to do, what not to do the last couple of years. Um, there's there's different versions of this. Uh, a lot of guys will do it a little bit different, uh, but I'm going to show you how I do mine. Uh, first things you'll need. Um, well, I guess I should start. The idea, if you don't know, of, of a drowner rig is we're in the first shed. It's going to be easier for me to show you how to do this. Uh, versus being out, you know, on site where I'm going to trap. So let's uh, let's say this this board here where I'm hanging my fur. This is the bank. This is where the water meets the bank. Uh, we'll say that the ground that I'm standing on that's well beneath the surface of the water, and this is the bottom of the pond, the lake, the river, the creek, whatever it is. Okay. Um, the idea behind this is <clears throat> you have a wire that you have an anchoring point at the bank and an anchoring point down in the deeper water and the way it works is your foothold trap catches the animal they can't go this way they can only go one way and that's straight down under the water and they drown quickly if you set this up right it works really well but there are a lot of things that can go wrong and that's what i'm going to show you from my experience of what to do what not to do um <clears throat> first thing you'll need you'll need a roll wire um i believe this is like 12 or 14 gauge the way i do it this works well for me i've caught 50 60 pound beaver um, not had any problems a lot of guys will recommend using something a little bit bigger that's fine um, it's just that this goes a lot further it's easier to carry i can carry a roll of this and do you know numerous sets versus a couple rolls of the the bigger wire as long as you set this up right this stuff works fine too so you'll need that you'll need an anchoring point at the bank which in this case this is one thing one big change that i've made is I now use a wolf fang earth anchor and what I used to use was just a nice sturdy stick and I would stick that I'd put that stick you know far down in the bank as I could wrap the wire around it and that's what I used to do more times than not it does work but the animals don't always do what they're supposed to they don't always just get caught and go straight down into the water a lot of times they'll stay up on the surface thrash around and what happens is you got a stick in a, in a muddy bank and they, and they pull this way, then they pull that way, and they pull this way, and, and all of a sudden your stick comes loose. And that is the most important thing to eliminate when you're doing this set. You do not want this wire. You want this wire going from the bank to the deeper water tight at all times, and that's the most important thing. If they wiggle this stick loose, and all of a sudden you have slack in that line, that's when you start to have problems. Uh, the wire will kink up. That they can't go down. They're not going to go down smooth. They're going to stop. The uh, the slider rig's going to get stuck. Um, they'll sit there. They'll twist, uh, twist their feet off, lose your animal, um, or be alive. And none of those things is, is something that you're really wanting to do. Um, so that's that's pretty important. That's why I started using these earth anchors. What I'll do is I'll drive these um, pretty much straight into the bank. Here's the water. It doesn't much matter. You could drive it kind of straight down like this, back in the bank, whatever it really takes. Just make sure that when you get these all the way back, 
that you want to pull on it to make sure that your earth anchor because when they go in they go in like like this and then you pull back on it and that's what makes these it flattens out so you'll have a couple inches of slack there if you don't pull so you want to make sure you pull to where you can't pull anymore make sure that's tight and uh as far as the uh anchoring system down in the ground or down underneath the water um, i'm going to use this air compressor just to show you i already have my wire on it um, but we're going to rep this is going to represent let, let's say a cinder block or or something like that uh, cinder blocks work really well um, they're heavy they're not too heavy to where you can't throw them out there but they're heavy enough to hold an animal trying to pull back on this way and that's very important you you definitely need something heavy enough to where they cannot pull any slack you do not want that animal to pull back this way and give that wire any slack at all so center blocks work really well um, the only problem with those depending on where you're trapping if you're if you're trapping uh, where you get out of the truck and your sets right there perfect carry some center blocks with you you don't have to carry them far that's great um, I run a lot of lines uh, I run a, a long river line that I could be going up to three quarters of a mile walking one way there's no way I'm carrying center blocks that far here's a little trick my buddy taught me a few years ago that works really good feed bags uh if you deer hunt and you beat deer uh you, this is what the corn will come in or farmer um green whatever you can pick these up just about anywhere and they work really great you can carry as many of these as you want they don't weigh anything at all um, take a real small shovel with you or any shovel it just depends on what you want to carry when you get out to the set <clears throat> what you want to do is fill it up with if you can find rocks rocks are the best because rocks are dense they're heavy and it works really well not all places are going to have rocks you don't want to go spend half the day chasing rocks down to make your set so that's where the shovel comes in play you can uh, fill it with sand mud uh, whatever anything like that uh, works pretty good the only thing you want to try to do is stay away from uh, too much uh, sticks wood leaves stuff like that because that kind of stuff wants to float you want something dense something that's going to stay on the bottom so um, what I'll do is I'll fill this up halfway three quarters whatever it takes to get you want this heavy You want it really heavy to where you know that animal can't pull anymore And so whatever it takes I mean half three quarters full and then I'll take the tail After that's full. I'll take this tail you wrap your wire Around it, you know several times and then what I'll do is I'll take uh, the excess here and I'll, I'll actually tie a knot with this around the wire before you throw this bag out, you want to make sure you should be able to grab that wire and be able to pull that bag right across the shore without any part of this relaxing. You want that to stay tight. So, like I said, cinder blocks, whatever. If you have a chunk of steel, I mean, it doesn't matter as long as it's something heavy enough to keep that animal down. Um, last thing, depending on what trap you're using, this here is a Bridger number four. These traps work really good, um, but you'll, if you have one of these crunch, crunch, uh, swivel, crunch proof swivels on here, they work, they work great. You're good to go. You don't need anything else. This will actually double as a, as a drowner rig. They can, uh, they can slide down, but they can't go back up. So these work really good. If you have this on your trap, you're good to go. If you don't, you'll need one of these drowner locks, just a little L shape <coughs> drowner lock. That you're going to need to fasten to your trap to your chain and uh, whether a piece of wire or a j-hook or whatever you're going to have to fasten that really well and the way these work is basically just like this they'll be able to slide down the wire this way if they try to come back up they lock and they can't go any further if you put it this way you're doing the opposite now they can slide up which is not what you want and they can't go down so just always check before you you know leave your set that you did it the right way okay that's pretty much all you'll need so I'll put the camera down and show you how I set this up. I am not a professional uh, video expert, so just bear with me here, please. Okay. All right, uh, first thing I do, like I said, this here is my cinder block or my bag or whatever, something with some weight. I'm standing on the shore. Now, before you, uh, you're going to want to fasten your wire to it real well. Um, before you throw this out, I already have mine pre-cut, but usually I don't. I'll just carry the whole roll of wire. If you think you have to throw that out six or seven feet to get that down into deeper water to drown the animal, 
One tip that I can give you is always take excess wire off. I've had it happen too many times where I'll think I'm throwing it out so far and it, it goes further and what happens, this is anchored to your weight, you throw it, there goes your whole roll of wire, you, you're, you don't have any wire. So what I do is I always take a lot of excess and another thing, just to be safe, save headaches later, is after I get a little bunch of slack in this wire, I'll actually I'll find a stick and I'll poke that stick in the bank down through the wire. That way if I do throw it too far, it catches, the wire stays where it's supposed to, and you have it. So here we are. We're gonna take we're gonna take this weight, we're gonna throw it out into deep water. Okay, and then here's my earth anchor. It's already in the bank, it's, it's secure, it's tight. So we have that. If not, like I said, you can try a stick, but I I highly recommend using these because they are not going to give versus the stick could. Um, <clears throat> next thing you do, before you attach this to your anchor, you're going to put your trap on. Always check as soon as you get this trap on to make sure you put it on the right way. You want it to slide down but not back up. Okay? All you got to do is just hold the wire. This should slide down and you shouldn't be able to pull back up. So now that you know you have that right, okay? We're going to go ahead and attach it to your anchoring point at the bank. And this is where it's very important. You need to pull this as tight as you can. If anything, pull it to where whatever you have tied to the other end of the wire starts to move up the bank a little bit. That, that way you know it's not going to get any tighter. I'll pull it and pull it and pull it until, until it starts to move. And then I'll, I'll go ahead and secure this. Now that's all secure, everything's nice and tight. Okay? Now I've got my foothold and I can put that wherever I want, up here, wherever I think that animal's gonna put its foot. When he gets caught, he can't go up. It's locked. All he can go is straight down and it works, it works really good. That's what they do. They'll go straight down, just like that. That's what you want. You want that to slide on its own. That way if that animal comes up in the water, uh, they don't want to die, but they, they're going to get away from the bank every time they come a little further away. That's just that just slides on its own. See it? That's that's what you want. That's perfect. And then they can't come back up. It works really really well. Um, I'll show you uh, pretty much a close up of this. Here it is. Here's my trap. Wherever I think the animal is going to put its foot, there's the drowner lock. They get caught. They can't go up. I'm pulling. Cannot go up, but it slides right down. See how well that's, that just slides on its own, and that's how you want to do it. The most important thing is to keep this wire tight. I mean, it has to be tight at all times. You don't want it to give at all up here or at all down there. And if you can do that and make sure you keep it tight, you'll have no problems. Um, here's the beaver that we just caught on it. And I'll, I'll use this to show you, uh, people ask, how, how much water do you need for a drowner? Well, for a big beaver, this here is a pretty good size one, mid-40s probably. Got to keep this in mind right here. You can try to set up for a front foot catch, and, you know, if you do that, here's their front foot. They go down to the bottom of the drowner. See right here is where they're breathing. I mean, they're only going to be less than half a foot above that drowner. So if that's the case, I mean, you, you, you could do it in, you know, two foot of water. However, it doesn't always work like that. You have to plan for worst case scenario. You have to plan for catching it by the back foot. So that'll give you an idea of how deep a water you need. And that'll tell you how long, how far out you have to throw your weight. If, if the bank's really steep and goes straight down, that's perfect because the, the least amount of wire you can get away with the faster he'll go down and slide and, and be done with it. Um, if you have to throw that out 15 foot to get out in deep water, um, it'll, it'll still work. They'll, they'll make it down there. It'll just take them a little longer. So um, look at it like this. I mean, traps right here on the back foot. You've got roughly three foot to the nose. 
So you know, just to start, you're gonna need at least three foot, and then you've got your you got your drowner, whatever it is, a cinder block or whatever. You're gonna be up off the bottom a little bit from there, and then you got the chain of your trap. <clears throat> However long the chain of your trap is, with these drowner rigs, you want to use a short chain. This right here is actually a little bit too long, but um, you know it'll work. I mean, you want swivels, so if you can get away with two swivels and shorten your chain, I would recommend doing that because see now. Now you've got another foot, and, and assuming that that back foot is in here, now you've got three foot from the trap before he can still come up and get air, and he's not going to drown. So that, that's a good rule of thumb. Um, four or five foot is what I look for or more. Um, if you can get that, you'll have no problems at all. But uh, that's how I do mine. That's, uh, I know a lot of guys use poles. They'll stick poles down. And they'll they'll put their drowner rig on that. Uh, I, you know, you can do it, but you know these animals. They, like I said, they don't always. It's not like they just get caught and go right down all the time. A lot of times they're gonna stay up here for who knows how long, and try to keep pulling this way. They keep doing that, and they're gonna wiggle that loose. You know, you got a pole on the ground. It's soft bottom. They wiggle that loose. They get slack in this line. Here's what happens when you get slack in the line. Okay, they just pulled it. Now you get a kink. See that? You get a kink like that, so now when that drowner lock comes down, it's going to stop right there, and that's what you don't want. So I don't even take the chance. If I'm going to take the time to make these sets, I'm going to do them right. And uh, these, uh, like I said, these earth anchors, uh, I firmly believe, are the way to go. Um, I make my own, so I can, I can make these cables. If it's a really soft, mooky bank, I can make them longer. Um, if, if for whatever reason that don't, it does not work, it won't hold. I'll go with this plus a stick, you know, I'll put a, I'll put the earth anchor in and the stick right at the end and I'll wrap the wire around both of them just for double safety. But it, um, it works really well. I love the set. You're going to see in the next clip, this beaver that we caught doing the exact same thing I just showed you. So, all right, hopefully that helps some of you. Thank you. All right, Ohio beaver season here. Um, got a little pond here causing tons of damage for these farmers. Got the hut right over there. Um, right there's the hut. They had a little dammed up area through here. So what we did, we stayed away from the hut for at least the first night and uh, we just dug these out. <clears throat> dug two little channels and it flows right down into a culvert, goes underneath the bridge. So uh, it's we're not causing any damage or anything like that. But set uh, two drowner sets, one here, one over here. As you can see, we got a snap trap there, which sucks. This one here is gone, so we're hoping there's one on the other end. Well, I'm gonna pull it up and uh, we'll see. She is. And we got one. Little. Big. No, it ain't little. That's oh, a big sorry. one. That's a giant. <laughs> Not a bad one. Front foot catch. All right. Well, <clears throat> cool deal. Got one. These sets work really good. These are awesome sets, man. I catch a lot of them, especially if they're shy. They don't hard to get them through a 330. These footholds and counters are, they work really good. But we'll reset these, we'll give it another night. If uh, we don't get any action back over here, I'll probably go over and set the run coming out of their hut.